I want to take us on a little journey of our origin, our root. What could be the reason for, for this? I think that my journey started with my mother. My mother experienced and encountered Jesus about the year of 1958, where he saw Jesus on the cross. And Jesus asked him, just hold to the helm of my garment and it's, it's enough for you. That was the encounter that transformed her life. My mother had delays in bringing forth children. When eventually that delay was broken, she began to give birth. First one was female. Second one was female. Third one was female. And it was such um, an issue in the setting that she was if you couldn't bring forth a male child. And so she adopted a name, baptism name or Christian name of Hannah. That, Lord, visit me like Hannah. And the visitation happened. The first male came, and the second male came, and the third male came. I happened to be the second. So she took her spirit. Now, the stories I'm telling you are things that I want us to learn a lot from deeply. She took her spirituality so serious that she woke her children up every 5 a.m. Led us in devotion, 5 to 6. Whatever, you can't be too sleepy for it. She wasn't educated as it were, but whatever they taught her in church, she broke it down to us at home. That was how she, she groomed us in prayers, in impartations, until I was age nine. And then went to the Methodist church reverend and told him I had a special number with my mother, age nine. And my junior brother and the two of us, and I don't know what happened, but the man allowed us to sing the special number. I don't know what we sang that day. I don't know. I can't remember the song. But the people clapped. They say, what? Powerful children, anointed children. And then we proceeded on. Around that time, there was a breakout of revival in the town we were. Otuko town in Benue State. Revival was in 1978. 1979 and 1980 going forward. There are some people in that revival who are here. Dr. Miss Saloma, I mean, Evangelist Saloma, who is my senior sister and also my junior sister. And then we have a, a, a set of twins, her junior sister, yeah. We have a set of twins, Onyanta and Juma also, who were in that revival. Did you come in tonight? Yes, look at them, identical twins. Do you still remember them? Capture them. They were right there in 1978, 79, 80. They are full members of Dunamis currently. God bless you. Please sit down. Do you recognize them, Sister Patricia? I'm sure you do. So that, was, that happened, and there was so much fire in that revival. Yes, we had evangelist Sylvester Odufu, who is with the Lord now. We have Bishop Sunday Gotcha, who we are coordinating what they call the Christian Fellowship Center. And then after that, we had Brother Victor Boy, who became the anchor of what we were doing. He knows Victor Boy very well. Victor Boy's mother passed not too long ago. And the God gave us the privilege to minister to her before she passed. And Brother Victor, but I'll come to that shortly. And we had, and so this fire was burning. In the middle of that fire, I took a three-day fast for the first time on empty stomach at the age of 11. 
I think they were still in that, uh, in that same um, uh, 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 fasting as well. 11, three days dry, only. And in those days when you fasted, you broke the fast exactly at 12 midnight on the last day. That was what happened. On the last day, the fast was broken, but it was intense. Reverend Francis Abuka was in that fast. Bishop now, Abuka was in, in, in that program. Um, al along with others, it was very, very intense. That for me was uh, my initiation, if you will call it, into the realms of power and experience with God. Once that passed, shortly after, okay, I'll come to that. Shortly after that, in the same year of 1979, Pastor E.A. Adeboye, came to Tugbo in government secondary school. He had come in 1978 and also came in 1979 to Otugbo. Held a crusade. In that meeting in government secondary school, before he could open the scripture to, to start preaching, the Holy Ghost fell everywhere. And people were, I mean, it was an explosion. I was in that meeting. And that meeting was a drastic turning point. As a matter of fact, I um, went to one of the young men that came with him, and I, and I had some discussions with him, and he encouraged and was talking to me about how to remain focused, how to remain on fire, how to study the word. That was 1978. Between 1978, 79, 80, we had gone with Brother Victor to villages on evangelism. We are talking about age 11, thereabout. We have gone to villages for evangelism. Are you following what I'm saying here? So you can, I want us to understand a journey. And done all of that. And then, young men, brother Joe, Joe Jesmel, um, young disciples ministry in Lagos, he was, he was also a product of that meeting. He was in the three-day fast in Wesley High School. That continued the journey. My encounter with Pastor E.A. Adeboye was 45 years ago. Four, five. After a season of some slight slackness spiritually, in the year of 1986, I rededicated my life to Christ in Deeper Life Campus Fellowship. I had an encounter overnight and Deeper Life Campus Fellowship and Kumu is 38 years. I had an encounter overnight. It lasted from about 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. I won't go into detail because I, I see time is racing. The outcome of that encounter was my life completely handed over to God and Lord, I am ready to do whatever you want. I went to the campus fellowship. Nobody was there. I cleaned out the chairs. Nobody told me. And then came and stood at the door and began to welcome people to the fellowship. I'm sure they were wondering, well, where did this new usher come from? What branch? I was from no branch. The zeal of God had consumed me. It was a driving force. I, I cleaned out the chair. Welcome to the people. In Deeper Life Campus Fellowship, we went all the way to Iowa IBTC in Lagos for Deeper Life Campus Fellowship conferences. It was a forming moment. After a while, I, 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 after doing that emergency ushering work and then all of that, I joined the Deeper Life Choir. Deeper Life Choir director is now a pastor and um, he, he's in Benetton. We met Brother Moro last time and my pastor in Deeper Life then Pastor Chris Obaji Makodi was here for the, for the dedication of the glory dome. Hallelujah. Now, that journey went until I stepped into the campus. Now, the, 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 the first campus was an A-level. And now this was the full-fledged finish going for the university medicine. And as I stepped into the campus, now, let me, let me say something before stepping into the campus. Because I want this journey to be understood by you because there are lessons to learn. After that A-level, I didn't get immediate admission. I, I had points that, I mean, I had more than cut-off points for medicine. So I had one year at home. That one year could be called my Bible school. 
Within that one year, there were days of seven hours in tongues. Average. Within that one year, seven days, no food, only water. And within that season, seven hours of tonguing. We had a fellowship called the Ojira Fellowship where iron sharpened iron. This bishop, he might judge you here today, tonight. He was in that fellowship. Bishop, you are sitting all the way there. Please come forward and let's create a seat. Where somebody shared, another shared, it was like bomb dropping. Young men on fire, on fire, on fire. By the time I stepped, in, I like you to listen to this. By the time I stepped into the university, I arrived like a flame. I was studying medicine, but every morning before class start, started by 8 a.m., I would pray between one hour to three hours before, let me say something again. In that 1986, 87, we had already, we are already casting out devils. Already. So I entered into the university aflame. I will pray between one hour to three hours every morning. Sorry, I didn't plan to embarrass you, but uh, you're welcome. <laughs> we were doing rural evangelism. Eh? You remember how we climbed motorcycle? Attack my mother. We climb motorcycle to interior villages at Takpa and Moda, evangelizing ruggedly. You see, there are people who are in ministry today who have never done anything in rural. They, they just want the glamour and the pulpit and the, the elegance and I have seen me big man of God. At Takpa and Moda, motorcycle back. We can, you, you come into some communities, the whole place is tied down with darkness. Demonic possession and oppression everywhere. And mother, if you remember, take your sin. So when I was in the full-fledged university, I was or, already aflame. Praying one to three hours every day. Then went to class by eight. By 12 o'clock, I had burden for prayer again. After that is the break between 12 hours. In medical school, you are a medical doctor. You know what I'm talking about. Who does that in medical school? One hour to three hours pray in the morning. Another one hour in the afternoon. You have to go and read. When the body got too much, I went behind the physiology laboratory. And then I'll be praying right there for using that one hour before the next class by one. While I was in that praying at the back, I met a young man who was also praying quietly. Then, as I prayed a little, I would share a little scripture with him. He exploded. I shared a little. He exploded. Brother Boniface Ochai is a medical doctor in, in Australia right now. So he told me, who are you and where are you from? I told him, I'm in 200 level. He said, really? What you are sharing with me, can you come and share in the general fellowship? He was the president of the Nigerian Conference of Christian Medical and Dental Students, our branch, NCCMDS. So he brought me to the fellowship. He said, please, we have a brother here who wants to share something with us. By the time I finished sharing, Sister Becky was there <laughs> with her thick glasses. Glasses was like Coca-Cola bottle. I was the one who removed it. I removed the glasses. So don't block your eyes like that. The glasses were so thick, she only removed it in the bathroom. That she can't go to the bathroom without it. 
with one prayer. So when I finished ministering to them, medical students, I stood on the altar. Everybody was on the floor. Received on the floor. And I'm sure you know why we reduce that hand a bit. Let me tell you the story. In a Rewan church, we say receive. By the time service is over, 30 plastic chairs have broken. <laughs> and that was what we had, plastic chairs. Another service, 50 plastic chairs. Pastor said, this is not economical. <laughs> Let people begin to receive without breaking chairs. <laughs> that was, it was a deliberate thing. I just withdrew from receive. <laughs> huh? Do you understand what I'm saying? So in that, in that meeting, they were all on the floor. Fire. Is Dr. Odumu here? Maybe he's serving in the medical stand. He's a senior chief consultant, uh, family physician, very, very vast. They were all in that, in that meeting, and everybody was on the floor. You know the, the question they asked themselves? Where did this guest minister come from? What is the name of his ministry? She, asked, she was one of those who asked. And so they said, no. He's here on campus. 200 level. Two. 200. What you see today is not chance occurrence. It's not chance occurrence at all. There is a major matter I forgot. When my mother was pregnant for me for six weeks, the pregnancy got lost. She thought it was. She bled until they said the pregnancy was gone. And she returned back home and the pregnancy refused to go. It remained. When that pregnancy was, was seven months, she had a revelation in the night where somebody brought a basin with plenty bottles of oil and told her, the child that is to be born, this oil is for his head. One bottle of oil would have been enough. But plenty bottles inside the basin. So when you see the apostolic and see the prophetic and see the evangelistic and see the pastoral and see the teaching and then see the songs and see, and see the, 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 the writing and see the things and the third, I believe that is a representative of different bottles. Different bottles. She doesn't know the kind. Just, just plenty. Bottle, bottle, but inside the basin. This bottle, bottles of oil, I, they are for the head of the child that shall be born. When I was born, and I was like age four, I told her the name to call me. I said, call me leader. In a language that is not common, that is a word that is not a common use. How did you get to that word? There are many things we can say there. So while I am not saying these things to create any impression on you other than to give you some insight. And then my ministry in the, in the university continued. Can, whether it was in the, during world rounds, cancer is healed, tumor is disappearing, breast lump is disappearing, medical student, world round. Yes. During world round. When I, I, I met a, a primary school classmate who had end stage kidney disease. He was in the world. The moment I walked close to him, I recognized and said, ah, what is happening here? His hair was like chicken feather. His tummy bloated. His skin was flaky. At that time, what they called dialysis was not common in, in, in the country. He was meant to do a kidney transplant, which was impossible. 
So he was literally waiting for death. He said, when he saw me, something jumped into him. Medical student. At this time, it was like 500 level. I prayed for him, anointed with oil. He was discharged in seven days. Back to his feet, kidney normal. Please take your seat. Along that course, I came across Maurice Cerullo's book titled Proof Producers where he explained Acts chapter 1 verse 8 which is the anchor of our ministry today. That Acts chapter 1 verse 8 fastened upon my heart and I'll come to that later. Is anybody bored with what I'm saying? And so, I was now still a student, but I had invitations. I was ministering. I was in your ministry, in Makadi, right? I was in the ministry that you were. This was, all right, okay, this, this was a bit later now. Around what year was that? 1993. All right, so what, okay, I was out at that time. They announced that you were coming, and the whole thing looked like it. I was looking at it, it looked like it was Christmas they were celebrating. You're coming. Then in Makodi again, the same thing. You're coming. Anytime your coming was announced, it was like a Christmas coming. This is 91, 92, 93. I was a guest of a Methodist church in Jaws, Genta Mackery, on top of the hill. The Methodist reverend was to attend the minister's conference here. You see here? Yes, okay, yes. Yes, please come, Rev reverend. Happy to see you, Reverend. So, you are, what's your full name? The Reverend Daniel Oku. Where are you now? I'm now in Theological College, Zonkwa. Zonkwa, Methodist Theological College. Methodist Theological College, Zonkwa. But I knew you since 1991. I always invite you to our revival. In the revival program, many came from different places. When you open your mouth to preach, people will fall under anointing. But, but there was something that we experienced that we never experienced before. That was baptism of the Holy Ghost. You met at this church, 1991. It was very strange to us, but you introduced it, that to our members. And from there, we start having members from Bukuru, from Nasarawa Gob, from Rukuba, and other places. And through that, we have four solid churches now established there. From there. Hallelujah. Please. Okay. Methodist Theological Seminary. Those invitations were there. And then got introduced to my father and the Lord, Papa Yedekos, ministry. That one came let's say about over 30 years ago, began to listen to his tape, unveiling the realities of the supernatural realm. Having listened to him for a while, I saw him in a vision of the night. He poured oil on my head. In the last quarter of 1994, he poured oil on my head. That oil was the seal of ministerial fire. The fire had been there. Ministry had been on. But it was the seal of ministerial fire that exploded us into dimensions that became beyond our imagination. When I was graduating, in our yearbook I wrote something. Everybody was to write a comment. And my own comment was, 
Father, I thank you for helping me to combine the rigors of medical training with tangible kingdom ministry. I said, for as it were, I was a part-time student and a full-time minister. Yearbook. My sister was always afraid. She thought one day I would run out of the university. She said the letters I wrote to her from school, anytime I wrote her a letter, it was an epistle. He said it was as if she was reading 1 Corinthians. <laughs> Another epistle. Yeah. I'm asking you whether you are in a Bible school or in a medical school. She asked me so. Are you in a Bible school or you are in... In fact, my, my roommate, when I was in 200 level, he was in 300 level. He asked the same question verbatim. Are you in Bible school or you are in medical school? Because he was seeing me praying one to three hours in the morning. Are you in Bible school or in medical school? I told him both. <laughs> that guy... Couldn't finish Bible school, he was withdrawn. Medical. Sorry, medical school. While we continued, I made all of them pray. We'll fast for three days. No water remaining in the same spot. The same kind of three, seven hours non-stop, I made them do it. In the university. <laughs> until, your, ab until your abdominal wall was paining you. If the, if, the, if the abdomen doesn't pain you, you have not prayed yet. Hallelujah. I see a fire of commitment coming upon somebody here. If you are the one, you shout the loudest, amen. If you are the one, you shout the loudest, amen. If you are the one, you shout the loudest, amen. Along the line, I came across some people. Along the line. And I'll preach before this conference is over. There are a people God should never allow your path to cross. A people you must never meet. Because they neither belong to your past, your present, or your future. They can't, they can't, they can't accommodate anything about you. You don't belong. I met these people. Relationship in the first place was an error. These were people who had no discipline of an official university education. None, zero. The best was halfly educated. Mid-level. Rest secondary school. Drop out. So the, the discipline of life. How you face life with discipline. Zero. Where there was zero financial discipline. No difference between church money or God's money. Where pastor's wife can go straight from the, with offering money in the market to buy things. Since this ministry started, the checkbook of this church has never been in my possession once. Can never be. I never believe that church money belongs to the pastor. And any pastor here who is eating the church money or taking the tithes, you need to repent. Then zero marital family life. Zero. Where you can have pastor's wife shouting on, 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 on husband. In front, of in front of everybody. Question is, what am I, what is, what is this? Mindset different. Lifestyle different. Focus different. Principles of life different. Every single thing different. On your marks, get set, move. When I begin to draw the lessons at the end, 
there are things you must never manage any association. Even for two days. If you notice that principles are different. If you notice principles are different. Take your seat. And here, I met Papa Yedepa physically, like I said. He anointed my head with oil. And then, when ministry was six months, we were just building from the scratch. He passed to Abuja six months. He passed there. I asked him to anoint the ground. Sir, we are building. He poured oil on the ground and said, building, grow. Within seven weeks, we were under the roof. May God connect you with oil that produces results with speed. May God connect you with oil that produces results with speed. If you are saying amen, say loud amen. He poured the oil on the ground. Building grew. Roof came. And our relationship continued. Please take your seat. By 1998, our ministry was only two years old when he appointed me a member of the board of ministers on his board. Charismatic Bible Faith Ministries. CBFM, you know it. You were there. I was there with Pastor David E. Bill. We were all on the, same, on the same board. He appointed us at the same time. Two years. At times I begin to wonder, what did this man see in my life at such an age of ministry? In that same year, we broke the ground for Faith Tabernacle. Under one year, Faith Tabernacle was built. We were there in 1999 to declare the 50,000 seat auditorium. 1999 to dedicate it. I drove round with him. Look at it right there. I drove round with him in the foundation. Drove round with him in the construction. Drove round when the building wasn't roofed yet. So it was clear to me that this was achievable. What you see determines what you can dare. I saw the process. And then 1998 came 1999, first Shiloh. There have been 25 Shilohs this year. I have not missed one. I want you to understand something about followership. I have not missed one. Every schedule is scheduled away from it. In that 1998, he had a minister's conference and he invited a couple of people. In that minister's conference, I met a man, Archbishop. Bishop Charles Ajinasari is now Archbishop. And he preached with fire and gave a very, very rugged testimony. How he went to India and so on and so forth. And no, deep, call it unto the deep. He was talking supernatural. And supernatural is my passion. So I, we, I drew close. When I watched his ministration the first time, it didn't take time for healings to happen. Without a doubt, there was a sharpening. He made me to minister in his, he invited me in 1999 to minister in Tamale, in northern Ghana. And then I have ministered um, in only five churches in the world on a Sunday morning. His own is one of it. On a Sunday morning. There's nothing you can do for me to minister on a Sunday morning. I am mentioning it so you can know that there are relationships that are profitable as against those that are complete are useless. <laughs> I will come to him later. When I talk about Maurice Cerullo, because when Dr. Maurice Cerullo came to, to Ghana, he said, Pastor Paul, I'd like you 
to meet Maurice Arillo. So for the first time, he made myself and Maurice Arillo to meet. All right, so, and then shortly after that, my father in the Lord appointed me. This will be almost 20 years now as a member of the Board of Regents of the Covenant University. University Board. 25 years now. Member of the Board of Regents, the first and second. Right. And it was first and second boards. It was such an experience. Such an experience. When we are to go for board meetings, I will research, read around Harvard, read around Cambridge, read around Oxford, read around all the universities. What made them big? So that when they are asking people to speak, I won't be just watching. That was the path that I took with our Father in the Lord. Before this conference started, we were together on Monday where he prayed for the conference. It's a relationship of consistency for over 31 years. It will interest you to know that he has four children, all married. I officiated in all four weddings. Some I preached, pre some I joined. <laughs> Let me move from there. I have two more and then, we, and, then we, and then we draw the curtain. Let me talk about my encounter with Rehard Bonke. So you have heard of Pastor Adeboye, you have heard of Kumuyi. And as I'm talking, I believe that power will be, will be dropping on people. You have heard of Papo Yedepo. Papo Yedepo came for my daughter's wedding. That one is a, is a constant. He came for my daughter's wedding. Visited me when my mother passed. Personally. Now, Rehard Bonke. Rehard Bonke was coming to Makodi for crusade. My sister here was the protocol committee chairperson for that crusade. And she said to me, Rehard Bonke will be coming and landing in Abuja. Can you help me pick him from the airport? I said, help I should be thanking you for giving me such a privilege. So I organized protocol. We picked Bonky from the airport and then he's to pass one night in Abuja before going to Makodi. I received him from the airport straight to Sheraton Hotel where we booked for him. He lodged overnight. The next day, when he was going to go to Makodi, I was meant to go with them. But I decided not to go. I gave him an offering in foreign currency, in dollars, and then gave him a wristwatch. My mentality was, this man is on time. I want to be on time. And I said, pray for me, sir. I knelt down. He laid his hands on me. And he said, Father, whatever you felt on the cross of Calvary, before you sent your son Jesus to die. Give him a portion of it. Jesus, what you felt on the cross while you were dying for the world, how your heart was, give him a little of that heart. Before then, I had experienced some, some manifestations, but there were dimensions of manifestations I was not seeing. No matter how hard I prayed or fasted. So he laid hands on me. Power. And when they went to go, I told the hotel, the room service, what do you call them? Potters. Housekeeping. I told housekeeping, don't change the bed spread. Don't go to the room. Don't clean anything. Just leave it the way it is. I dived into that bed where he lay. I was in tongues for the next 10 to 11 hours. Non-stop. Father, whatever grace laid 
on this bed, whatever grace laid on this bed, overnight, I connect. I connect. Whatever grace. As I prayed almost 12 hours, I, I became dizzy like I was falling asleep. In between that junction of sleep and awake, I had a very drastic miracle encounter. A, a, an encounter that was clear that there was a, a transmission of a miraculous dimension of the supernatural. I saw it raw like a creative miracle. Then I got up, slept back, continued the prayer. By the time it was daybreak and I knew I had received what I wanted, I followed them to Makodi, joined them in the crusade. And then our relationship continued. Whenever Bonky was coming, he knows. I will wait for him at the airport. Receive him. So anytime we go to Ghana today, and John Dako is in Ghana, he will wait for us at the airport. Till tomorrow. I said, why? He said, when Bonky was alive, you always came to receive us at the airport. I now have to receive you. Bonky was in Abuja crusade. I was a prayer committee chairman. They said all the committees should bring their budget. I said budget for what? Budget to pray. Pastor Abba was with me in that committee. I said do you people want budget? Do you need money for the prayer? They said no. Because they can't look at my eyes and say yes. <laughs> and he will not say, say yes because we are together. No way. Anything you need, I will provide it from my pocket. I will give you the drinks. We don't need a dime from Bunker. I will, will give you, provide everything which we did. On the crusade ground, in Abuja crusade, Bunker went to the altar to preach, brought out his hand and showed me. What is this? He said, see the watch you gave me. He was wearing the watch. Of all the watches in the world, During the glory dome dedication, he told him I want, he wants to come. We were looking for plane to fly him. Sometime back I say, I wish it was today. Two planes can go at once. And then when Bunky was about to pass, he met him. Please tell us what he said. Your experience with him. Is this story doing anything to you? Hey, but we were in America for our conference, director's conference, and uh, at the end of it, he sent a message to us that he would like to meet myself and my wife in his house. So we drove three hours to Palm Beach. That was where he was staying. Went up, we met him, and uh, we had uh, quite a lot of um, prayer and singing, it was wonderful. That, but he said we should have a meal. So whilst we sat at the table, he, he showed me a watch on his hand and he asked me, John, do you remember the one who gave me this watch? I said, ah, Pastor Bonke, we have so many pastors in Africa. How can I remember who gave you this watch? I said, oh, you've forgotten. This is from Pastor Paul. This was... Yeah, it's a good point to give a, put your hands together for Jesus. So this was given to him by Pastor Paul in Abuja. And I remember that, that incident. Then everything, I recollected everything. And then he said, when I go back, when I go back to Africa, I should tell Pastor Paul, if you will not meet again here, you will meet him in heaven. That's it. That was Bonke. His last crusade in Africa was in Lagos. We flew all the way to meet him. Met him in the little potter cabin. Pastor Paul, are you well? How is the place? How is everything? How is the ministry? Put something in his hands. He Receive. So when you see crusades today, he saw the crusade. He said, this looks like a Bonke crusade. It didn't happen by chance. 
Let me end with Dr. Maurice Cerullo. I have told you already how myself and Maurice Cerullo, Dr. Maurice Cerullo met. After that meeting, he, became, he just held me like this. Paul, Paul. Invited me as, as his minister to minister in mission to London. He went to Semarang, Indonesia. He asked me to come. I ministered massively in Indonesia. Then one day, when the Lord's garden land was already gotten, he flew down, not to preach, not to do anything. Dr. Maurice Cerullo flew down. I took him round. And then he looked at me and said, Paul, God sent me not to the church, not to anybody. He sent me to you. He said, I should tell you that the word is in your mouth. Say it. He sent me to you. He said, I want to pray a prayer for you. And it's going to be a gift. It is a prayer for supernatural eyesight. He said, it is discernment of spirit. Supernatural eyesight. He prayed. You see, it's not possible to have an encounter you are not aware of. Association does not equal as transmission. Yes, you can't have an encounter and not aware. That was the first major time. The second major time, he had, he had come, he came for the glory dome dedication and then he came again. And he was passing by and he passed on this altar. You know what he told me? If I remember that thing, I want to cry. He said, Paul, before Elijah passed, he asked Elisha, what do you want? I am asking you now, what do you want? And he started crying. It's like it. Before Elijah passed, Elijah passed, he asked Elijah, what do you want? Paul, I'm asking you, what do you want? He began to cry and saw. He's kissing me on the cheek. He does that all the time. Kiss on the cheek, two cheeks, on the forehead. This is dedication. This is not that clip. The real clip is still, is, is still uh, I'm sure they can get that. If you go on YouTube, you'll find it. And then he laid hands on me and my wife. Here. With such a transmission that makes me aware that there is no country I step into that can't open. Him and Lester Sumra, they have an anointing that somebody called the bull anointing. That anointed me with fresh oil. My horn is exhausted. Like, it's like a lion that carries horn. That is breaking open hard grounds. And he dropped what he carried. Next thing I heard, he was gone. The next news is Maurice Cerullo was gone. He had passed. We prayed back and forth on the phone. Talked with his wife on the phone. Before the passing. Beloved brothers and sisters. Whenever you see anything that is significant and big try to find out where is this thing coming from do I have the time for any lessons tonight let me give you seven lessons from all of this please take your seat here are ten reasons why people pray equal connection with the divine prayer is a way to connect with a higher power expressing devotion, reverence, 
and a desire for a relationship with God or the divine. 2. Seeking guidance. Many people pray to seek wisdom, clarity and direction in their lives, asking for help in making decisions or understanding difficult situations. 3. Comfort and peace. Prayer can provide comfort during times of distress, offering a sense of peace and reassurance that one is not alone in their struggles. 4. Gratitude. Prayer is a way to express thankfulness for the blessings and good things in life, acknowledging the positive aspects of existence. 5. Intercession for others. People often pray for the well-being of others, asking for healing, protection, or blessings for family, friends, or even strangers. 6. Confession and forgiveness. Prayer provides an opportunity for self-reflection, allowing individuals to confess their wrongdoings and seek forgiveness, leading to spiritual cleansing and renewal. 7. Strength and endurance. Through prayer, individuals often seek the strength to endure difficult circumstances, asking for the resilience to face challenges. 8. Worship and Adoration Prayer is an act of worship, where individuals praise and adore the divine, celebrating the greatness and goodness of God. 9. Requesting Needs Many people pray to ask for specific needs, whether material, emotional or spiritual, believing that divine intervention can provide solutions or support. 10. Cultivating a habit of mindfulness. Regular prayer can foster mindfulness, helping individuals remain focused on their spiritual goals and maintain a sense of purpose and direction in life. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures, He leads me beside quiet waters, He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you for liking this message. Thank you for watching this message. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. We love you. We celebrate you. Please share our content with others. Share our content with your follow or your fellow. Um, what do I want to say now? Share our content with your friend, with your family, with your loved ones. Share it with your enemies. Share our content anywhere. Believers Global TV to the whole world. Let's gather and preach the gospel of Christ through the power of media. See you in our next video. Don't forget to share the love of Christ with others. And share the love of Christ with your friends, with your family, with your enemies, with your loved ones, with anybody at all. Anybody, human being at all. Share the love of Christ with them. And as you do so, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will, the Lord will keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And uh, what do I want to say again? Follow us on all of our social media platforms on Facebook at Believers Global TV, on uh, Instagram at Believers Global TV, on the TikTok at Believers Global TV, on YouTube at Believers Global TV. See you, see you, see you later. Bye.